Hi, everyone. I think they've got uh, more oomph in the first serve department and of course less errors coming off the return to serve as well. Here are some of the highlights of that yeah. opening set. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, just got that nice mix of the top spin to use with the great effect and there's the lob that we saw a couple of times. This is that tipping forehand followed by the lob. This way. So the lob. Yeah, great backhand volley from the Manuel Gagliardi. Can they continue in the second set then? Oh, sorry. The US Open, the atmosphere is electrifying, the lights are bright, the camera is following you everywhere, the flashes of the camera are going off. Your opponent is staring at you. This is an impossible dream. It is my impossible dream. US Open Center Court. A dream once started by watching the Chris Evert and Billie Jean King when I was five years old on a black and white TV in South Africa. I turned to my mom and I said, this is what I'm going to do one day. And this is what I did. You see, I come from a small town in Africa, in South Africa, in Clarkstorp. It's a farm town during the very difficult times of apartheid. Where being a professional tennis athlete, that's that's ridiculous. That's impossible. It was so difficult to leave South Africa, to, to go play in another country. The government made it really tough to take money out of the country. It was just so difficult. And to tell someone, I'm going to be a professional athlete, they would laugh at you. But as a top junior in South Africa, our local pro put up a picture of Jennifer Capriati on the window of our club. Jennifer Capriati, the former number one, one in the world, an Olympian, gold medalist at the age of 16. At 10 years old, she, she made the debut of Sports Illustrated magazine. At 13, she was on the cover of, a tennis, of, the, of the Sports Illustrated magazine. Jen tortured me with this picture. I would walk past this picture every day when, when I was in South Africa. Tortured me. I'm stuck in South Africa. Am I even good enough to play against someone like this girl? Well, German Open, 2002. Not only did I play her, I beat her. Can you imagine? Number one player in the world? Okay, it was doubles. <laughs> but but in, that was my personal victory. Well, later, at the age of 18, my dad gave me a car. 
So I took this car and I sold it. And I bought a ticket to the United States. <laughs> I started on my journey. A tough journey. No family, no parents, no support. Listening to advice from the wrong people gave up my scholarships to the most prestigious university in the United States. Following the impossible dream to be a pro player. Years and years I struggled. Finally, I got a ranking. A ranking pretty good. My country, South Africa, asked me to play and represent them in a tournament called the Federation Cup, which was in Spain. Well, that's, a, that's an amazing honor. Uh, of course, I played. But you know, after that, my ranking got better, and I did it again. The impossible dream. The Australian Open, the French Open, the US Open, Wimbledon, the impossible dream. Now I have these questions for you. What makes you a champion? When did it all begin? What mentality makes you an exception? When do you know that you are different? So I asked my mom this question the other day. I said, Mom, how did you know I was different as a child? I mean, were there signs? Was I, was I difficult? My mom said, you know, I thought you'd outgrow this tennis thing, but you never did. And I said, yeah, but that can't be it. That just, uh, you know, okay, I love tennis. It can't be it. There must be some sort of sign. She said, you know, you lost so much. Anyone else that would have lost as much as you would have quit. But you didn't. In fact, you didn't even have that thought in your mind. And then she said, you know, I would like to have a vacation once in a while. But every time I gave you an option, let's go have a vacation, you said, no, we have to go play tennis tournaments. So I came to think about it, and I said, wow, okay. I was a little different. Um, I was going to ask some of my friends on the tour, some amazing people. So I asked Christina Brandy. Christina was world ranked number 27 in the world. One of the best counter punchers in the world. Amazing athlete, dedicated to her sport. I asked Lilia Ostrello. Lil was 41 in the world. She played for Stanford. She was NCAA double, cha NCAA double champion. Lilia was just inducted in the Hall of Fame at Stanford. She now is a coach at Harvard and is doing her master's degree in, ha in Harvard. I asked Abdul Salah, who was a former track star, played, do you say played? He's a football, NFL football uh, player, and now coaches Serena Williams. I asked him. I asked Sean Bassett, who's a former US Navy Black Ops and is a world-class ultimate fighter. I asked a Harvard lawyer. I asked a famous CEO of a company. I asked them all the same question. And it was really interesting because they all had the one same common denominating answer. The athletes knew early enough what they wanted to do at five, at eight. And they all said, I wasn't okay with being mediocre. I wasn't okay with being average. Yes, I felt different. I wanted something more. I was focused. Most of them said I didn't have the time to mess around. They were determined. But most importantly, they pursued their dreams since they were five. 
Christina said when it rained and everybody was happy that they didn't have to practice, she wanted to practice. What is it to be a champion? Perseverance, discipline, desire. However, the CEO of the company was, didn't fit my profile. She said something different. She said, well, I didn't know what I was going to be in high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. You know, but when I started to work, I found my passion. When I found my passion, I went for it. I was so focused. Now, she is one of the most famous CEOs in the world. Again, I ask you these questions, ask yourself, what makes a champion? And it doesn't have to be tennis, it can be anything. When did it all begin? What mentally makes you the exception? When did you know you were different? Anna Kornikova. Do you guys know Anna? Have you heard of her? There's, there is a computer virus named after Anna Kornikova. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about uh, Anna, or about me, with regards to Anna. I was flying to a different country, and uh, I was putting my bags, my rackets, in the bin, in the airplane, and I sat next to this lady. And this lady said to me, Ah, oh, you're a tennis player. I said, yeah, I'm a tennis player. Are you professional? I said, yeah. I said, you, you know that, uh, that pretty girl, the Russian, you know, that doesn't want anything? She's really, she sucks. <laughs> and I said, you're talking about Anna Kornikova? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Anna Kornikova, she sucks. <laughs> so I thought to myself, wow, if she sucks, I must really suck. <laughs> So Anna, Anna, I was on the tour with Anna. Anna, Anna trained hard. Anna fought. She had hardships too. It's not her fault she's pretty. It's not her fault she's sexy. I mean, we're all different. We all look different. We come from different cultures. We come from different places. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different parents. But, you know, a champion will not listen to the bad things. She knows what people think of her. But this girl, that they say this sucks, this girl is number one doubles player of the world. This girl that's number one in the world won two grand slams. She won a lot of tournaments. <laughs> she uh, mixed doubles, she got to the finals of two grand slams. She got to semis and quarters of Grand Slams and singles. She got eight in the world. Okay, so success. Eight in the world. There's 1% of players in the world that make it. 1%. There, how many doctors and lawyers are there in the world? And this lady, this ignorant lady that sits next to me on the plane that says, oh, she sucks. Are you kidding me? So... You're going to get people that tell you things, that you can't do something. You're going to get people that say bad things about you. They're going to, they don't know. They don't know what's in your heart. They don't know your passion. You find your passion and you go for it. That is the mentality of a champion. And that goes for anyone. Everybody has it in them. Everybody has it in them. You just have to find your passion. And don't look back. For me, she is a champion. She sold out stadiums in Poland on a Tuesday afternoon. She changed the world of tennis. She made it possible that girls that weren't, ma that weren't winning every tournament could make money on endorsements. So, the impossible dream, my name is up on the in lights, 73 in the world, not bad. Not what I wanted, but I did the impossible. 
This desire, this passion, this persistence, this goes into my next part of my life. I started a business, the Kim Grant Tennis Academy. And this message that I give you today is every day I try to give it to my students. And you never know where this will take them. This year we got five scholarships to universities. But who knows? Who knows what they will do without them, with, without, with this message? Who knows? Not yet. <laughs> Who are we? And how we think determines what we will become. Come on, let's do this! Come on, let's do this, people. <laughs>